My name is Scott Simmons. I'm the pastor here at Faith United Church of Christ, and I'm with Abby Kinder, who is a lifelong member at our church. And Abby, um, tell us a little bit about you and what you are on the Enneagram and what that means to you. Okay. Um, my name is Abby, and I have obviously, obviously been going to faith for a really long time. <laughs> Um, since I was a baby. Um, I am a six on the Enneagram, and that is known as two different things, either the skeptic or the loyalist, um, depending on which stuff you use to um, do your research. But uh, that basically means that I um, kind of live in a state, and this is for me personally, of uh, just kind of like questioning a lot of things, uh, not just with how, like how the world works, but also in, uh, my relationships with people and, um, just kind of in the safety I have with my family, my friends, um, I kind of, my family and friends, the people that know me the most would definitely agree with this. Um, and it's kind of scary to kind of look into what drives you and what are your motivations behind uh, your interactions with people. So this has been very eye-opening for me. Mm. <laughs> and um, everyone that knows me kind of understands my anxieties and my fears of the world. And most, I think the thing that drives my fear the most are my kids mm. um, and just, how they're going to navigate the world and going through their daily life, keeping them as safe as possible. Um, but the sixes can also be extreme. And I've, in my research, um, like a healthy six is someone who has a, uh, like healthy understanding of how the world works, but doesn't let it like control them. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you have like the really unhealthy sixes that believe in like crazy conspiracy theories and all sorts of things. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. yeah so, like, like the imagination of six types, which is part of the head triad is like mm -hmm. robust. Right. And yeah. if you're unhealthy, you can imagine every way that this could go <laughs> wrong. Right. Yes. <laughs> I, I had a very, very six moment um, last week. Cause I went on a roller yeah. coaster for the first time in two decades with my kids. Mm -hmm. And I used to never be afraid of those things but I'm like a dad now, you know, like, <laughs> and I mean, I was terrified. Yes. I got over it, but it was like, this thing's not tight. Is my daughter going to fly out? Like, mm -hmm. that's, that, that, imagine that's doing that all the time. It's like, it's, and I told, I, my kids are very wild. Anyone who's met them. Mm -hmm. So we had a <clears throat> incident with Colton busting his head open recently and thought we needed stitches. And the first thing all my friends and family asked was like, were you okay? Like, did you handle it okay? And I'm like, I don't even know. <laughs> I think that it just kind of happened. Um, but yeah, it's kind of overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, as a Christian, you would think like, I should not live in fear like this. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been one of the most like convicting things for me, I think, um, is like, am I truly like faithful and trusting God if I have this much fear? Mm. Um, and so I don't know, but I think I've always been, I've always been a six. I was a fearful child. Um, and I think that that after having kids, it just kind of snowballed into what it is. And um, I don't think it's right or wrong. I just think that it's who I am and using that to, and I don't know how to explain it, using that to like the best of my abilities and um, not that sixes have nothing to offer, but I think that we um, just have a lot more things going on in our head than you would necessarily see. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to another six. I, I didn't ask his permission to share, so I won't name him, but somebody from the church. And he he said to me, Scott, you have no idea like how all the things I imagine that could go wrong. Like, and for him, 
he he has to counteract that by kind of reviewing God's faithfulness and his mm-hmm. past. Yep. A way to like, you know, just kind of edge out all the worry. I thought that that was really interesting. Yeah. I have like song lyrics that even as a child, I would sing in my head mm-hmm. when I would get like super overwhelmed or super fearful about a certain situation mm-hmm. just to kind of bring me back and after talking, I don't know if a lot of six, it should be in therapy. Everyone should, but yeah, we all <laughs> like, need it. for different reasons, yeah. but we all need it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but like talking with like my therapist, like, Hey, this is okay, but you got to be able to bring yourself back to the present and engage with whatever's actually going on instead of imagining all of the things that could happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think sometimes I live in my head more than I do like in the moment because in some of my research it said like sixes are super prepared and they're always on time and I'm like that's not me (laughs) um but probably because I am trying to think of all the things that I need to do or have or xyz and then I'm late (laughs) Mm -hmm. and I'm like I haven't done any of that but I've sure thought of it yeah yeah so that's that's where kind of the I don't mm-hmm. know if that's the right word, but ruminating on on, on mm-hmm. the thing becomes counterproductive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, he when he talks about worry, he talks about um, the lilies of the field, and they they neither spin nor toil. And I've always taken mm-hmm. that as an incredibly helpful literal metaphor for spin or for worrying. It's just, you're spinning. Yes. With all this energy, you know, but you're going mm-hmm. nowhere, and you're just yeah. making yourself sick. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, so uh, I read Richard Rohr says that, you know, sixes, you, you know what the fruit of the spirit is for a six? I mean, you've done some research. Keith. I mean, is it, hang on, I have my notes. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but I know that the root sin is like fear. Mm-hmm. What is the fruit of the spirit for it? Courage. Like safety and security. Oh. Courage. So sixes can be the most courageous people on the planet hmm. because your fear is so prominent in your life and it's such a factor. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're more aware of how fear works or you can become. And, yeah. and when you begin to overcome your fear, we all have fear, right? Um, yeah. But when a six begins to overcome their fear, it's such a big thing that on the other side of it, it's, it's quite remarkable. Yeah. Right. I could definitely see that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and being, I don't know if I put this on there, but I, my husband, Colin is a six as well. Oh, he is. Um, yes. So we have a very interesting dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did a little bit of research on our family vacation about what it looks like for a six to be in relationship with a six. Yeah. And it's kind of wild to look at the different things that we both bring to it. Cause I think that we're both very different sixes as well. Mm. Um, his fear is more of like what the world can become mm. and mine is more of like the daily life fear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and worry. Mm. But, um, one of the things that I thought was super, um, interesting to look at was that sixes are a lot of times really good, like team players. Oh, yeah. And um, although we don't have a whole lot of close friends, like the do- friends that we do have, um, it feels like that piece of it, we don't ever have to worry about. Like we don't have to worry about our friendships and the relationships that we've built because <clears throat> once we build those, we have like full trust in that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like if you can establish trust with somebody, like you feel like you can trust them, generally mm-hmm. a six is they're going to stick around mm-hmm. and it's going to be very hard to break down that relationship. Yes. Right? Like you're, you're incredibly stable where other personality types, it's just like one wrong move and, you know, everything's everything's starting to, yeah. <laughs> right? But you're like, no, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Um, one of the descriptors I'm thinking about using just kind of a general descriptor um, in the beginning of my message this Sunday is that sixes are warm-hearted and have deep feelings. Mm-hmm. 
right? And I think that that's like a positive um, account of like a six who's stable and mm -hmm. great to be in relationship with. It's like, they, they feel great about you and the feelings run deep and, you know, they're sticking around and, yeah. and they're gonna give you grace, you know, because it's, they've chosen, <laughs> you know, at this yeah. point, like no. deal is done, you know? Yes. And that was one of the things I didn't find when I was reading about sixes was like, I am a very emotional person mm -hmm. um, as far as you will know what I'm feeling based off of me. Um, mm. My parents are a six and a nine. Um, so I feel like I've taken some of their attributes from growing up um, and understanding um, just kind of how to balance that because six and nine were my two highest mm -hmm. um, personality types as well. Yeah. yeah. So I thought it was kind of crazy that my parents, I have both of their mm -hmm. like personalities as well. Um, but my mom is very, um, shows her emotions and isn't scared of that. Um, so I think that that's kind of where I got that as well. She's a nine. She's a nine. Yeah. 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 Um, I, and my dad is a six. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in the six, the nine and the three, we make up a triangle. And mm -hmm. um, according to the Enneagram Institute, when, what does it say here? It says, when moving in the direction of growth, fearful and pessimistic sixes become more relaxed and optimistic, like healthy nines. Mm -hmm. But when you're stressed, <laughs> you become c competitive and arrogant, like an unhealthy three. So you mm -hmm. become like the worst version of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, this whole thing has been so fun to research mm -hmm. and kind of just see it on paper and like see the connections between the different personality types and just how they're all connected. So yeah. I have found it fascinating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of where where I was and why I decided to do this. It's just like every time I've engaged in it, it's really been helpful. Mm -hmm. And the more I understand, um, and you know, what I'm playing with for this coming Sunday is just kind of um, leaning more into the idea that, like, well, you have a primary type which is a six, and I have a primary type which is a three. We all have a little bit of each type in us, mm -hmm. and. Um, and the idea is, is that as we become more healthy, actually, the less easy it is to identify our types. Yes. And then from a theological viewpoint, Jesus, um, because he is the self-actualized person, this healthy person, he embodies all these different types. Yeah. And so then what is the dynamic that your type, the six, has at play that is also a factor in my life? It just might not be the dominant one. And I think it really is this idea of, of fear, feeling fear and choosing courage. Yes. Because courage is not the absence of fear. It's like what you do in the face of fear. Yes. You know? Um, yeah. And so then how do we get that done? <laughs> you know, like, right? That's like the things that I think about in my daily life that someone else might not find as like courageous. Mm -hmm. But for me is like, a big deal. Um, I think too about just like my, some of my personal fears, like getting on an airplane, mm -hmm. like something that I would said I would never do, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do like, because I'm not going to let that like affect my family or hold us back from doing anything. Um, and I think that it's just like the daily life steps of trust and being able to recognize the fear mm -hmm. or the worry, mm -hmm. acknowledging it, and then being able to step past it, um, even in the small things, because it doesn't always have to be the big ones that everyone sees. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's maybe why a, a well-developed six can be so courageous because like mm -hmm. when I get on an airplane, I'm not really fearful, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so, yeah. so I don't, I don't get that rep of courage. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I'm not building anything by flying on the plane. I'm just like annoyed, you know, or whatever. Yeah. But for you, that, that is a big moment. And so, oh, yeah. you know, you just poured into your courage bucket by succeeding in that. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that, that kind of makes a whole lot of sense to me. Yeah. One of the other interesting things, sorry, I didn't oh, go, to yeah, please. Um, was that like sixes want to have control over their environment. So they will do what they need to do in order to feel like they have control um, so that that fear doesn't like escalate or become worse, mm -hmm. um, which is not something that I would have said about myself, but upon looking at it, um, I do try to control certain situations so that they are less fearful um, or so that I am more in control. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I think about the people that surround me and our personality types, I would not have said that like, oh, I need to have control of the situation. <laughs> yeah. That's not it. Yeah. I'm normally like in the background, just letting things happen. Uh -huh. um, but when I look deeper into it, I have set us up to be in that situation where we are most safe or most um, protected. Mm -hmm. But Wait, can and you, we also can you share an sorry. example of that? Um, so like when my friends or I are taking our kids places, um, we like where we're sitting, uh, where the adults sit and, um, kind of, I don't know, I'm thinking most about like our fireworks. I went to the fireworks with a group of friends yeah. and, um, we chose a spot that you can get out of easily. Um, if there were an emergency mm -hmm. and uh, kind of put ourselves around um, the children and had all of our fireworks stationed the correct way um, mm -hmm. so that they wouldn't be like everyone had a square to stand in so that they wouldn't touch other people with the fireworks. <laughs> and these are things that like I don't recognize that I am doing in order to keep everyone in the situation safe. Mm -hmm. But then upon looking at them, I'm like, all these other kids are running around with their fireworks acting like it's the coolest thing. But me, I'm like, Oh no, stay in your square, please. Like uh -huh. separate all of these things. And I just don't recognize that I'm doing them. Yeah. It's almost as if like when you're operating in that way, you, the question is why wouldn't everybody else be doing this? Like it's assumed right? Like, yeah. of course you would do this, right? Like, of course you would check where the exit is and, you know, yeah. make sure there's a contingency, like who doesn't do that? And yeah, I, I think that that's one of the things that's been really neat about this whole experience for me so far is like, I think everyone, there's just things that are core to my personality type that I just assume everybody else feels and sees yes. and does. And then it's like, nope. <laughs> I know. I mean, some people do, and you know, there's overlap and all this, but there's there's other personality types that they just they would have never thought about that. They would have never seen it that way. And in fact, yeah. some might see that as overkill, you know, like there's I know. <laughs> like it's it's pretty and so there you are doing something that to you is just instinctual. But now with some awareness, you realize in a sense, it is a choice. It's feeding a need that you have. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's wrong. In fact, yeah. in the fireworks example, it sounds like you were pretty right. You know, it's like, yeah. fireworks are dangerous. Yes. <laughs> right, people get hurt. Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah. But people let their kids run around with them and swing mm -hmm. them all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Just not me. <laughs> One of those. Yeah. Stop. Uh, I know, I need people like you in my life. I, I can be a little reckless. Yeah, I can't. You, you know what's interesting? Did you, <laughs> in your research, did you come up, um, uh, come across the um, two types of sixes? Any discussion about that? The phobic uh, and counterphobic? Phobic and counterphobic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you identify as one one or the other? Um, I think, and this is where Colin and I kind of looked into things a little bit more. Um, I am much more phobic um, 
as far as like very expressive about like what we what I'm scared about or what my fear is. Um, Colin is not high strung, but really can identify into like the rule breaking part of like a six his like earlier years yeah. now obviously not so much um but yeah and one of the big things we found about sixes is that is that there can often be like a childhood trauma that has um kind of laid the way for a six to feel the need to be in control of a situation and manage the fears yeah um which we both found very interesting um as we both have experienced something as a child mm -hmm. um that was traumatic so yeah i think that his and i don't want to speak for him but his um stemmed more from having to be in control uh to help his siblings and manage that Mm -hmm. Whereas mine was like a later on realized trauma mm -hmm. that I just wanted to not feel the fear. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to be scared. So instead, I'm going to manage all of these different things so that I don't have to feel that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you comfortable sharing what Colin does for a living? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, and the reason I, I thought of that is as the um, the counterphobic six, as we mm -hmm. think maybe Colin could be, that's like they um, they take the bull by the horns, right? And so mm -hmm. he's literally a police officer. Like yeah. his job is responding to danger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. It's so, yes. so stereotypical in a sense. Right. Um, and, <laughs> And your your analysis, you know, um, of the childhood stuff, which is always tender and, and very personal, mm -hmm. but it's, I think that that's interesting too, because he needed to, I, I don't know his story, but it sounds like maybe stand up to some authority, mm -hmm. protect others around him. Yeah. And so, you know, and that's, that's very much like a six is like authority. We haven't really talked about it, but it's a huge dynamic for sixes. Yeah. And so sixes can be very loyal to an authority figure because of their fear. They're looking for some sort of external authority that provides that security. Yeah. And and then, um, but the 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 maturity of a six comes when they begin to recognize their inner authority. Hmm. Right. Um, yeah. And so a really unhealthy six is self-doubting, can't make a decision without checking with ten different people. But mm -hmm. as a six becomes more courageous and healthy, they have a sense of inner authority and mm -hmm. are able to make self-directed decisions. And that's definitely him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I he mean, he is the authority when he shows up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. And I think that his six, um, it's obviously like at our core mm -hmm. of what drives us but i was completely shocked when it came up as a six for him mm -hmm. um and we did this on our family vacation who doesn't um <laughs> so more people in our <laughs> church these days <laughs> yeah. <to know. laughs> um but i was just so shocked because when i think about him like zero fear mm -hmm. like he literally walks into these situations where who knows what could happen yeah. Meanwhile, I'd be like cowering in a corner. Please mm -hmm. don't make me do this. Mm -hmm. Like, um, but at the root of it all, um, there is a fear there. Mm -hmm. Um, and his goal is to protect those around him mm -hmm. from X, Y, Z. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, yeah. I'm speaking a lot for him, but yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to speak about him too. So we'll, okay. We'll see. I, I, if if I was talking to him, I would imagine the dynamic for him to think about, or anybody that's the counterphobic six, is um, are they truly engaging in courage, mm -hmm. which I think comes with a healthy, sober recognition of the danger and the potential consequences, yes. or are they um, trying to deal with their being driven by their fear in an unhealthy, mm -hmm. reckless way? yeah right 
because an mm -hmm. unhealthy counterphobic six is going to do things that are reckless, that are impulsive. Mm -hmm. They can be very <laughs> aggressive. And this is why it's like, I can't believe you and your husband are both sixes, right? Like th that kind of like thing yeah. that you had, because you can look so different. Yes. But both are driven by their fear until they're able to claim it and, and then choose the courage yeah. that's possible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. So interesting, isn't it? I know. <laughs> it's been do so you, fun. Do you know who a classic biblical six is? Mm -mm. the apostle peter huh that's who i'm going to preach about this sunday i, I don't want to cool. get too, too much of it away but um i think he's a counterphobic six mm -hmm. because uh when jesus is walking on water he's like if it is you sixes can be really skeptical right that's yes. the purpose or the skeptic if. if it is you tell me to come jesus mm -hmm. all he has to do is say one word because sixes are motivated by authority even though they're skeptical yeah. of it and then Peter starts to walk on water. He just gets out of the boat. Yeah. Like, you know, like they're all afraid, but here he is, instead of cowering, he's like, I'm going to take it dead on. Yeah. But he hasn't matured enough yet because when the wind comes, he starts to sink. Yeah. Oh, Peter. But, but by, the end, by the end of his ministry, um, you know, he is put on trial by the Sanhedrin, the, the authorities mm -hmm. that arrested and, and killed Jesus. And they're threatening him. And he's like, well, whether I should listen to you, the authorities, or God, inner authority, you know, hmm. that's for you to choose. But I got to listen to God. It's like, yeah, Peter, man, he's courageous. Yeah, for sure. It's I crazy. Wanted, I wanted to check with you also the kind of scripture I plan to land on and see if it connects with you. And if it doesn't, then I'm going to be in a tizzy and have to find something else. So no pressure. Oh, gosh. <laughs> But it's, it's um, Jesus says to the disciples, um, this is John 16, so his last conversation with them in the Gospel of John before his arrest. Okay. And he, he says, um, you will have trouble in this world. So that's the truth, right? Like yeah. there is no amount of preparation and squares and exit plans that you can come up with as a six to make sure you're 100% secure, right? Mm -hmm. You'll have trouble in this world, but take heart for I've overcome the world. That there's reason to have courage because yeah. God has already overcome the world. Like at the end of the day, you know, love. Yes. Life. Yeah, for sure. Right. And I think that that is a um, big piece of acceptance in it is like god didn't say that we weren't going to be scared mm -hmm. he didn't say that we weren't going to worry um but in the end you need to accept it and trust that like god's got you that mm -hmm. whatever his will is will be done yeah. and although i can do all of these things ultimately what god has planned for us is going to happen mm -hmm. yeah yeah wow. right i mean that's that kind of surrender and that like choosing mm -hmm. to believe that good news that that god indeed has you in the palm of his hands and that mm -hmm. he has plans for you that are good and at the end of the day there's a place that is a wonderful place for you and mm -hmm. your children you know yep. um, and that suffering and trouble doesn't negate that reality Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um when are you flying? Sunday. <laughs> so uh you have a choice, right? When you feel the yeah. fear, you have a choice to choose courage. And, yep. And uh, perhaps a scripture like the one I just shared, or or maybe you probably have a favorite already, is gonna be mm -hmm. key to overcoming. Yep. Yeah. Well, Abby, thank you well, so much for uh, sharing. I, it's You obviously spent quite a bit of time thinking about this, and I think that you're probably blessed for it. And it's been a blessing to talk to you about it. Yes, thank you. All righty. Um, I'm going to end the recording somehow. <laughs>